I'm Johan Rashivega here in Holyoke Media in our studios in One Court Plaza, Holyoke, Massachusetts. And I am here with Julio Quiñones, who is one of the composers of this new cycle of Victory Players, Puerto Abierto, Open Port. Julio, welcome. Thanks for having me. So you are part of this new cohort who is going to be creating new music for the Victory Players. And in this recent residency, you have been working along the Victory Players on getting to know them and having some exchanges on the ideas and the projects that you will be working on for your next piece. So what can you tell us about the process and the approach you have in your composing work? Yeah, so right now in this beginning stages, um, I already had like s different ideas of what I wanted to do with this piece, um, part of the proposal that we have to, to get together for it. Um, but after meeting the players and actually seeing them perform and seeing the rehearsals happen for the other p uh, pieces for the composers from the last year's residency, um, and getting to see what they can actually do, like what they're capable of, the incredible performance skills that they have. Um, I'm, I, it allowed me to start thinking more individually than, than generally about each instrument. Um, of course, uh, and before this, like I hadn't known about Victory Players. I had seen them perform um, in different occasions. So I already had a, a sense of what they could do, but getting to meet them and actually seeing them in other concerts at soloists also, has also helped me to gauge how they work and how their their incredible skills. Um, and th and in this sense, I sort of feel that now that getting I've been getting to know them and speak to them individually, um, I think that now my pieces will be informed by those by those um, interactions. Um, and it will definitely be think, something that will be taking me back home with me while I'm working on it. Your background experience as a composer, a musician, comes from studying music at the Conservatorio de Musica in Puerto Rico, yes. and also now going uh, into your doctorate. Yes. So how this evolution has been as a process and a, and, and, and a way of growth that reflects into the music you have been creating during these years? Yeah, it's definitely been like a long, it feels very long. It's probably just the span of, of six or, or eight years. Um, but it's definitely been a long way to get into my doctorate. And I, looking back at the music that I used to write, um, it's definitely been like a very, but also a very fast, a very long and very fast process of, of reacting to my surroundings while I was in Puerto Rico. Um, like, like, you know, we, we are reacting to the music, but all the music from Puerto Rico and the music of our culture, but we're also reacting to the different classical era music and pieces that we are being introduced. Um, like when I got to the Conservatorio in San Juan, my experience with classical music was zero to null almost. Like I didn't, ha I didn't hadn't had much experience with, with classical music. I didn't have a lot of experience with, you know, getting to know that classical music history. And I mean, I, I knew the basic composers, Mozart, Beethoven. We always listened to the same ones. Um, but it wasn't until I got to the Conservatorio and started meeting all these people that had come from families with classical music traditions and their parents were in the Puerto Rico Symphony and all of these other things that I had to catch up and I had to and I had to um, get to know all this new repertoire but also getting to know the actual new music that was being done um, outside of Puerto Rico and in the United States and in Europe and that really opened up my mind to the different possibilities and you know getting to know you know getting to know the music of my peers but also as I left Puerto Rico and went and did my master's at, at Peabody, and now that I'm at the Graduate Center, um, you know, getting to know different people from different kinds of, different paths of life um, has definitely enriched the way in which I see the world and the ways in which I engage with my music, um, which has sort of changed as I've been, you know, as, as I think that after I left the island, um, my perception of, you know, the work that I do has changed and my interactions with Puerto Rican culture and tradition, um, that perception has changed as well. Um, and I, I always feel that my, 
when I think of myself, I always think of myself in Puerto Rico, even though I'm not there. And I think sometimes through my music is, is a way in which it might not seem very direct, but it, through different aspects of my music, I sort of sort of remind myself and, and you know, and be and engage with that culture. Um, because for me, it's, uh, you know, all of my background and all of the things that I am processing, they're always there, even though it might not be apparent. And even though while being in a, cons in a conservatory is mostly focused on the history and legacy of European composers for basic knowledge. It is also important to acknowledge the importance that Puerto Rico has as a place where a lot of great composers and great music created in the Caribbean mm -hmm. come from. And how does that make you feel being now where you are creating music that is a contribution to that repertoire of new music that represents Puerto Rican culture. Yeah, it's definitely something like composers in general. Um, we are <laughs> we are always fighting with the canon and fighting with the idea of a composer. Um, and whenever we think about, and more specifically in Puerto Rico, when we think about classical composers. We have these these big figures of Amaury Beray, Hector Campos Parsi, um, Jack Delano, who wasn't Puerto Rican, but he contributed a lot to to the classical music um, space there. Um, we are also we are always um, you know shown these big figures as oh these are our composers, these are this is what they did, um, and it's sort of and it's a very interesting challenge because we see what they did and you know we want to do things that are different we don't want to be repeating their same ideas like the big nationalist school of music there um, it was very interesting and very, it was very important for its time um, and we can you know learn a lot of great lessons from them but also there's a lot of things that we can talk about the present Um, like I was, I, I've been researching a lot of that, a lot of that time because for work I've been doing my doctorate, and you know a lot of their initial ideas for the for that movement revolved around taking traditional musics and elevating them to the uni universal arts and universal sort of. Um, aesthetics of classical music and what does universal mean we're talking about we're talking about european wide comp composer classical music tradition um and that's a very limited way of actually you know understanding this and actually performing this i think respect and you know an acknowledgement of our culture is very important but also to be honest about what it is that we're doing um and sort of treating these materials in a way in which you know feels honest as I said, but also doesn't diminish them or, you know, make them seem like a trite almost. And I think that's also so something that I've been thinking a lot about because indirectly, you know, the way in which I, th I think about a lot of musical aspects, you know, like, such as rhythm and, and m mostly rhythm in my music, um, I'm, I think a lot more about bomba plena, salsa, reggaeton, and all of Caribbean music, a lot more than Prokofiev and Bartok in the classical tradition that people when think about rhythmic classical, classical music, they think about, oh, Prokofiev, Bartok, Stravinsky. I think a lot more of the Caribbean in that sense. So, I, I, you know, this very rich tradition is there. Um, there has been a lot of composers um, in this program, actually, past editions of Victory Players and also other composers that have contributed to this. Um, and I just feel that through this project specifically, I sort of am putting the first footholds into how I'm starting to really work through these very big issues. How it has been the experience, talking to the Victory players, exchanging ideas and getting that sense of how their skills can represent what you have now in mind to start creating your piece that it will be part of Puerto Abierto. It's been a very illuminating experience seeing how they work um, because uh, I know that in past editions they have, as I said, they have worked with Puerto Rican composers and they have taken like workshops and different sort of, you know, different um, preparations they've made to actually understand different Puerto Rican music. So in that sense, 
Um, like I had uh, uh, an individual meeting with Nathan, the pianist. I, ha I had uh, this whole sketch of what I want the piano to do in certain parts. And he was identifying different rhythms. Oh, this is piano, right? And this is, and this is like, yeah, yeah. And so this awareness and understanding that they have from this, from these traditions is very, is cool. And it's very good because um, you create a sort of shorthand into, of course, I'm not only writing plena, I'm, I'm elaborating a lot of different things, but the, but the very fact that they are aware of the rhythmic qualities that this music has is incredible because, you know, I've had the opportunity to, to write for different musicians of different walks of life and they haven't been, this, you know, aware of the importance of certain rhythmic qualities that um, these, these kinds of music uh, and, and these kinds of inspirations can have. And so knowing that they have this awareness and that they pay very close attention to these original materials and respect it and sort of acknowledge it in their performance is something that's been very, very reassuring. How it has been, aside the uh, experience of being with uh, Victory Players and beginning the preparation of your piece, to be here in Holyoke, where it's the largest community of Puerto Rican people living outside of Puerto Rico, how does that connect with you or, or give you another layer of energy or inspiration for your work? It's been surprising. Um, I wasn't expecting uh, to, to, to be the, like this kind of place where there was a lot of Puerto Ricans. I, di I didn't have any knowledge of it. Um, and it's very good to know, like I, when well, the first day I got here, I went to a, a, a convenience store and just as I opened the door, this lady comes up and starts speaking in a Puerto Rican accent and I was like, whoa, okay. I was not expecting that at all. I, I, my, my experience walking in my soundscapes, uh, walking around ever since I moved here, I always feel like I always hear distortion. Like, I mean, I know English, but you know, always hear distortion. And whenever I hear someone speaking Spanish, it's like, oh, something clear happens out of all of the distortion. Um, so it's it's very good to know that there are people, you know, that there's a very big community here, and that there's you know our culture is sort of um, maintained and it's sort of preserved in, in these kinds of spaces. Um, I'm re really looking forward to getting to know the place. Well, Julio, looking forward to listening to your piece once it is complete, and to have you here coming back and enjoy also the experience of people from Holyoke and a region to enjoy of your composition. Yeah, thanks you for having me. I'm really looking forward to that.